So the question that's long been debated by scholars around the world, what is the best frame rate when capturing video on your drone? Do you know? How about you? Let's find out. Welcome back everybody, my name's Steven, and today we're talking about frame rates and drones. Now, that might not sound like the most sexiest of all videography topics, but it is a fundamentally important topic to discuss when preparing this bird for flight. Now, there's nothing worse than futzing around with your controllers and settings and, you know, proper frame rates and also shooting styles when you're flying up in the air because, let's be honest, these things never really fly at the prescribed times that the manufacturers say they do. Sure, they say they can fly 40 minutes, but in reality, you're going to get maybe 25 to 30 depending upon the wind and the setting and the also shooting styles and the setup of the drone so maximizing your prep time maximizes your flight time what is the secret sauce for frame rate well my friends let's discuss now if you're flying the mavic 3 or the inspire 2 which is down by my feet it's always best to fly at a higher frame rate, regardless of the shooting setting, because you want maximum information and maximum frames being sent to that drone sensor. I found that 4K30 or C4K30 or 6K30, if, if your drone can do that, is the secret sauce because it's right between that true form of 23.976 or 24 frames per second and slow motion. You can take that 30 frames a second and you can then pop it onto your timeline and of course make sure you modify the footage to make sure it works in that 23.976 or 24 frames a second timeline but it gives you the maximum quality the maximum clarity let's just say and the maximum ability of getting the best footage now i recently flew this mavic 3 in scotland and everything i shot was at c4k30 now, 4K30 works in almost every scenario. Now, regardless if you're looking to have a subject in your shot or if you're looking to do just a basic landscape or a panorama or any sort of establishing shot to set up the environment or scenario, 4K30 gives you the most flexibility. It is six frames short than 23.976 in true motion that our eyes see, but when you take that down onto a timeline, you're not sacrificing too much slow motion. You still have that same kind of clarity, that cinematic feel, let's just say. Everyone says cinematic and, you know, don't hate me for that. But it is the ability of being able to maximize that footage to make it believable within the time frame reference of true 23.976 or what the eye sees. Now, before you do any of your frame rates, obviously, it's always important that you follow the 180 degree rule. So you always double your shutter to match your frame rate. So if you're filming at, you know, C4K30, set your shutter speed to 1 over 60th. If you're flying at 4K 24 frames a second or 23.976, set it to either 1 48th or 1 50th. And that's just basic terms, but that's important to make sure you have, you know, the proper settings for the camera to adhere to the 180 degree rule. But that being said, when you work at 4K 30 frames a second, you do get better results. You do get clearer image. You do get better sharpness. You get more information to essentially edit and film with. And that just gets you more information in post. Now your files might be larger, they might be longer, but it gives you more flexibility. Also, if you need to adhere on your timeline to different styles of editing. Now you might want to push and pull forward. You might want to speed ramp. You might want to do any kind of manipulation to your footage. Now, and when you have that ability of being able to shoot at C4K 30 or 4K 30, what that essentially gives you is more frames to work with. You don't get stuttery footage if you're speed ramping up. There's nothing worse than seeing footage and shot in 24 frames a second that speed ramped that looks just kind of stuttery and juttery and not the best quality that can be. The, the true secret sauce to any of these style of, of 4K and 6K and, and higher frame rate shooting is that when it's shot in a higher frame rate, it gives you more buttery ability of being able to slow it down in post or speed ramp it if you need. So there is obviously limitations to shooting in 4K30 if you are looking at, for example, doing a film that requires specific action that needs to be shot in 24 frames a second. Let's just say you're covering a dialogue piece with two people speaking. Then of course you can't shoot in 4K30 because it won't match to the proper frame rate of audio as well as the proper frame rate of other cameras that might be used. So you need to have a specific use 
environment and setup to make sure you get that style of results. But that being said, if you're not following specific dialogue from talking mouse or action or that sort of thing, if you're following a car, for example, or if you're following a, a subject walking through frame or traveling somewhere, you can get away with using 4K30 and the results will be better when you slow it down and modify it in post. Now, aside from the Mavic 3, I do want to do a review on the Inspire 2 in 2022. That's a lot of twos, so say that 10 times fast. But this drone might be a good investment coming up because I think DJI is gonna release a upcoming Inspire 3. Now, that drone probably will cost as much as a small car will, so why not take a look at Inspire 2s that will soon, if not now, flood the eBay and buy and sell markets. People will wanna drop these things to get the latest technology, and at that point, that's worth taking a look at to see if you can get a great deal on these birds. Now, I have the X5 mount on this Inspire 2, which is beautiful. It's a, it actually is a micro four thirds camera, unlike the Mavic 3, which is a four thirds camera. It is not the same as a micro four thirds. It's a bit different. So with this micro four thirds camera, you get a really good quality shot in the air. Now with the X7 mount, you get a super 35 millimeter sensor. And that is a sensor I'd love to get one day because you can have adjustable lenses and you can go anywhere between 50 millimeters all the way up, I believe, until about 80 millimeters. Don't quote me on that, but that's really impressive for an aerial drone. And these things can shoot in ProRes. These can shoot also in RAW and they can shoot in higher frame rates like 6K. So yes, they're big and they are making my hand fall asleep right now, but but, 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 this is a very smart investment coming up because prices will plummet on these things because at one time they used to cost almost twelve to $15,000, but you can find one now for much cheaper. So have a look online if you're looking to get into that larger drone market. And of course, the real reason why we're here is to see shameless B-roll of drones flying in Scotland. So let's sign off with some epic footage in the Lowlands, Highlands, and the Isle of Skye in Scotland. Peace.